All right, Connor, are you ready for the React coding interview? Yes, I'm ready. Okay. Have you heard of the popular word game called Wordle? Yeah, yeah, I've played it a few times. You've played it. Okay, perfect. So this is going to be very easy for you to understand. I'm going to give you a link right now to the Wordle game. Let me give it to you here. Uh, so this is on the New York Times website, and you can play around with it a little bit while I explain to the viewers at home who might not be familiar with the game what it's about. Basically, every day, a five-letter word is picked at random from some word bank, and you, the player, have to guess what that five-letter word is. The way that you guess it is you have six tries where you basically type in a five-letter word. And at every try, the game is going to show, based on like different colors, which letters of the guess that you, you know, attempted which letters are actually found in the word that you have to find, which letters are not in that word, and which letters are not only found in that word, but are at the correct position, right? So for example, if there's a W in position one of both the word that you tried and the final word, then it would tell you, you have a correct letter in the correct position. And so you have six tries to get the final word, and that's the game. It became super popular over the last few months. It got acquired by the New York Times from the developer. And your task, Connor, is to recreate this game in React. And all that I'm going to be giving you is an API endpoint. So I'm going to actually give it to you right now. Here you go. Okay. Uh, it's hosted on the Frontend Expert website. And uh, that API endpoint is very simple. You hit it and you get a list of five letter words back. That is going to be the list from which you pick a random word to serve to the user as the, the word of the game. And you okay. have to recreate Wordle. You have the freedom to, you know, kind of add your own creative twist to it, not as far as the way the game works, but more as far as like the look of it, you know, how users select letters or select words. Uh, I'll leave that up to you. Okay, sounds good. Cool. So this is just an array, five letter words. Yep. Okay, so I think the first thing we should do is just get that data so that we can have our word. So let's create a use effect so that we can do this on mount. So when the component initially mounts, we'll make a fetch request and save one random word. So we can say use effect. We can auto import that from React. So use effect and the dependency array is going to be an empty array. This way it runs only one time on mount and we can say fetch. And we want to fetch from that URL. So I'll make a constant API URL. So let me copy this. So we can say const API URL is going to be equal to that URL. OK, so we fetch. And then we need to take the response and parse it as JSON. So we can say dot then response and response dot JSON. We need to call that. And then we need to take the uh, array there and save it somehow. So we can save it in state. And actually, I'm going to change this to be uh, async instead of using this dot then, just because I think it looks a little bit better. So let's say const fetch word. It's going to be an asynchronous function. And I will copy this line of code inside of here so we can say const response is going to be equal to await and this fetch call. And we can delete this. OK, so now we have the response, and we don't need that. And then we can get the JSON from that. So we can say const uh, words is going to be equal to response.json. And we need to await this as well. OK, so this should be that words array. And we just need to pick one random word. So we can say const random word is going to be equal to words at, and let's see, we need to get just a random value inside of this uh, array. So we can do math.floor of math.random times words.length. So essentially math.random gives us a number zero to one with one being uh, exclusive. And then we need to multiply by how many words there are, and we need to floor that. So like if we had 2.5, that'd be index two to get the zero based indexing. Okay, so that can be our random word and we can- As a, as a 
quick note, uh, Connor, I don't think I've ever seen someone, or at least I've never done that, uh, you know, regurgitate the random uh, way to get a <laughs> random number in JavaScript without Stack Overflow. So well done. You're basically hired just from that. Uh, but okay, it. go on. So we, uh, I thought I was hired. Okay. So we have a random word. Well, we have to see if it works first, but I think it does. So we can save this, uh, I guess, just in state, because once we get this random word, we need the uh, component to actually update. So initially, won't, we won't have anything until there is a random word. So we can say set, uh, call it solution, to be random word. And we need to create that state. So we can say const solution and set solution is equal to use state. And by default, it'll just be an empty string. Okay, and it is mad about this because this isn't imported. Okay. Okay, so now we set the solution to be the random word. We also need to call fetch word. So we can say fetch word. And that should on the initial on the initial uh, mount get our uh, random word as the solution just to make sure. Let me just add that to the screen. So let's say solution. Did we get radio? Let me make it render again. Homer. Okay, cool. Seems like we're just getting a random word. So that seems to be working. Okay. Okay. So now we need to create the actual like UI. So the this like board thing. Um, so let's see. We need to have all of the different guesses. So how many rows are there? Six? Yeah. So we get six, six possible rows guesses. You have six tries. Yep. Okay. Yeah. So let's create some state for each of our tries so that we can keep track of all of the words we've guessed. So we can say const uh, guesses, I guess, and set guesses is going to be equal to use state. And we want this to be, or I, I want it to be an array and we'll have one entry in the array for every word we've guessed. And if we haven't guessed a word for that row yet, so like if we haven't made our third guess yet, then the third entry in the array will just be uh, Null. So we can make this be an array of size six and we can fill it with null because initially we haven't made any guesses. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So now we have this array of size six all nulls and we can and map over that. Why array. are they arrays as opposed to strings? Just. So it is one array of what will be strings. So, like in my example, oh, I, I guessed, I guessed hello and then I guessed world. So at that point, the first index would be hello, the second would be world, and the other okay. four would all be null. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Gotcha. Cool. Okay. So let's create a board. So instead of having the solution here, let's map over our guesses, and for each guess, we'll create sort of a like line. So we can say, let's go to a new line. So we can say guesses dot map, and say for each guess. We want to return, and let's see. We can just make a new um, a new component here. So I'll call this a just call it a line. Okay, and now we need to implement this. So I'll just come down here. We could put it in another file, but just so it's easier for us to see. So function line, and for now, let's just return an empty div so that the error messages go away. Okay, so this seems. Like it should be good. And now for each line, we need to create sort of like the six boxes that we have. So in this line, instead of just returning a div, let's create those uh, boxes, or I guess we can call them like tiles. So let's say const tiles, and I'll set this equal to be an empty array initially. And what I'm going to do is essentially uh, iterate through the, the guess. So this line is going to take the guess as a property. So you can say guess to destructure that. And we'll iterate through the guess and add uh, a tile for each uh, letter in the guess, essentially. OK. So let's do for. And the reason I'm doing this as a for loop instead of uh, like mapping over guess is just because guess could be null. So in the case guess is null, we just want empty strings in each tile instead of, uh, if that makes sense, instead of having like the, the letter, because there won't be a letter. So we can say for let i equal zero, while i is less than, and make another uh, constant, call it guess length, and i plus plus. 
blocks. Let's call this like word length. Let's define this. And words are five letters long. Okay, so for each uh, letter in the guess, so we can get the character. So we can say const character is going to be guess at i. And in the case that, um, well, I guess in the case that we don't have a, a guess, this is uh, going to be null. So I guess instead of passing in just the guess, we can pass in the guess or an empty string. Okay. Yeah, I was gonna I was gonna suggest that to simplify and. Yeah, um, yeah, but we still need the for loop instead of like a map because the empty string is not going to be of length five. I guess we could make an empty string of length five, but do it this way. Okay, so then we need a tile. So we can say that I guess each tile is just going to be a div. So let's say tiles.push and I'll make a div. I'll give it a class name of tile and it will have the contents of the character. So we can say the character. And instead of returning just a div, let's return a div with, let's call it line as well. So each line will have the class name of line, and then each tile inside of the line will have that uh, class name of tile. Okay. And we can say tiles, and we need to add a key here as well because this is in an array. So the key, I guess, can just be i. Okay, so now we have all of the tiles, and let me add some CSS so that we can actually see it. Uh, it apparently does not allow me to save code. I guess that's fine. <laughs> okay, so... Yeah, it, it still renders. Yeah, so let's say we have... What was it? Row and tile? Line and tile. Okay, so say a tile is going to be just essentially a box. So I'll give it a width of, say, 100 pixels, height 100 pixels, border... One pixel solid black. Okay, so now we have all these boxes. I think these are way too big. So let's go down to 50 pixels. Okay, and now we need to make them in a row. So we can say line is going to be display flex. Okay, so now we have sort of this grid. I'll make these a little bit smaller so that we can fit it all on the screen at once. Okay, so we have this grid. Um, we might want some like gap just because it's what Wordle actually has. Has so we can say gap. Let's do five pixels. Okay, and all right. So now we also need uh, this is called app right now. I'm going to change the main class name to be board, and then okay. add some styles for the overall board as well, just so it looks a little bit better. So we can say board, it's going to be display flex as well. And this will have a gap of also five pixels and a flex direction of column. Okay, so I think that looks sort of like Wordle now. Uh, actually, let's make these a little bit smaller again, just so it all fits on the screen. Okay, cool. That looks Wordle-like to me. <laughs> okay. So let's see. So we have all these tiles, each one with a guess. And we need to actually handle now uh, like making a guess. Um, so to do that, I'll make another use effect and add a keyboard event. So we'll listen to, I guess, uh, key down. And when we press a key, we'll see what character it is. Uh, so we can say use effect. Again? So wait, just just to understand here, Connor, because on the New York yep. Times website, I think they have that like keyboard effect thing. Like you, you can actually see a keyboard that you press keys on. So here, how are you making the user type a word? Yeah, I'm just gonna use the keyboard like on the actual keyboard. So you're you basically they just type into like type. nothingness. Yeah, you can do that on Wordle too. Like I can type on my keyboard and stuff comes up too. Oh, okay, okay. They they have both, but yeah. Uh, I, I don't think you want me to try and make the CSS of a QWERTY keyboard right now. No, definitely not. <laughs> definitely not. In my mind, I was thinking maybe an input field, uh, just where you type in. But I, I think what you're what you're going for is is interesting too. And if that's the New York Times functionality, then that works too. Okay. Yeah. I mean, we can do an input if you want, but yeah, I think this will be pretty simple. So we can create a use effect, and we need a function that 
just like handles typing. So const handle type is going to be equal to this function that takes in an event. And this is going to be a, uh, a keyboard event and it'll sort of switch on what the key is essentially. And we need to uh, add an event listener. So we can say window.add event listener. And there's a bunch of them we could do, do here, but I think key down is probably going to be simplest. So we can say on key down, we'll call handle type. And then uh, on unmount, we can get rid of this. So we can say return and window dot remove event listener, key down, handle type. Okay, so now in handle type, we need to essentially figure out what the key is that was typed and add it to uh, essentially our like current guess. So let's make one more piece of state for our current guess. So we can say const okay. current guess set current guess. It's going to be use state and an empty string. And I'm gonna make this single quotes. Okay, so for now, let's just handle the case where I just typed in a, uh, a letter and then I'll handle the edge cases later of enter backspace or if like you type something that's not a letter. Uh, but for now, let's just say uh, set current guess. We can say current guess plus uh, whatever we typed, which would be event.key, I think. Okay. And then we also need to include current guess in the dependency right now so that we don't have like a old version of the current guess. So let's do that. And just so that we can see it, I'm going to add the current guess down here and we'll fix the UI in a moment. But for now we have it down there. So if I type like the letter A, we get it at the bottom, A, B, C. Yeah, okay. Can you see what so I type here... in the... Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so here, yeah. uh, Connor, you are basically creating and removing an event listener on every key down, right? Uh, yeah, essentially that is going to happen because of this dependency array. Um, yeah. I mean, technically we could get rid of this, I guess. We could do it like this and then use a function here. So we could say old guess and then old guess like that. Um, okay. yeah, so I that think one. that might be, yeah, that might be a tiny bit. Like it's not that it would really hinder performance, I think with this particular code, but that might be a bit. Yeah, it clean, might be a little know, bit better. Um, peace of mind of, of writing more. Yeah, I I worry that we actually might get to a point in a moment where we actually need that dependency anyways. But yeah, at least for now, this is better. Okay. okay. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so now let's handle adding the guess to our actual tile. So right now we just uh, have the guess that was saved, but uh, for the one that we are currently working on, we want the guess to be what our current guess. So let's say const is uh, current guess. And this is going to be if the index is equal to, so if index is the same as essentially like the index of where we currently are, which is going to be the first guess in our guesses array that is null. So if the first one is null, we're on index zero. If the second one is null, we're on index one. Uh, so yeah. we can say guesses dot find index uh, val val equals null. Okay. Okay. So that should tell us if we're on the current guess and if we are, so add this in here. So if we are in the current guess, then what we want to do is instead use the current guess as our guess. So now if I come down here and type, we can see we get the letters inside of this first row. Okay, I see. Okay, cool. So let me remove this extra current guess. I'm gonna fix the CSS a little bit also. So for the tile, let's say font size, like, I don't know, 24 pixels, and then Center this as well, display flex, justify content, center, align items, center. And then we can also make this uppercase. So let's do, what is it? Text uh, transform, I think. Uppercase, is that a thing? Yeah, that is a thing. Okay, cool. Okay, so now we have these like uppercase letters and we need to handle next um, being able to actually submit the word and see if it's correct. So let's come back up to our use effect. 
and we have the event key, but there's the chance that this event key is just going to be enter. So enter means like we submitted. So let's handle that up here. So we can say if event.key is, I think it's just enter like this. Um, I'm pretty sure. We'll see if that works in a moment. I, I so always if, forget here whether it's like key or the key dot key code or something, and then you have to look at a number, but let's see if that works. I know event.key always gives you like a string instead of some like confusing number. Whether or not it's enter like this or it's like something else, I'm not 100% sure, but I think it's enter like this. So in this case, uh, first of all, we want to check if the uh, if the guess is currently of length five. So if it's not, we don't need to do anything. So if okay. uh, guess or if current guess dot length is not uh, five, then we can simply return. And otherwise we need to actually submit. So let's check first of all to see if it's correct. So let's say uh, const is correct is going to be solution is the same as current guess. And uh, let's see, so if, if it is correct, what do we actually even need to do? Uh, I guess, I guess we really it, don't even need, need to do anything. Right? The game just kind of stops. The game just kind of stops for the sake of simplicity for now. What I would do is just like prevent users from typing anymore and okay. show the colors, which you will, the colors of the yeah, tiles the colors need to show after every guess. Um, right. Uh, okay, so I guess we can set some state that's like the game's over now. Uh, okay. Set. Game over, true. Is and don't worry over? about like restarting the game for now or anything like that. Okay. Is game over? Set is game over. Use state and initially this is false. Okay. So let's just add. Well, I guess in handle type now, if the game is over, we just don't need to do anything. So let's say if is game over, we'll just return and handle type no matter what we typed. Okay, uh, and we need to do this only if it was correct. So if is correct, we will set is game over to be true. Okay, so now if we guess the word correctly, we shouldn't be able to type anymore. Um, all right, so let's add the colors to see like what is correct or incorrect in our word. Just wait so, one second, uh, Connor. So sorry to cut you off. And you might have uh, thought to handle this a bit later, but since you have that is game over uh, return, which by the way, you you put two word, you put two games in that variable. Like you have is game oh. game over. Yeah. Um, also in the state. But um, oh, okay. is, there, is there any other time when you would want to have the type not do anything? Typing not do anything? Um, sir. I mean, I guess if you have like, if you already have five letters uh, typed and you type something other than enter, you don't need to do anything. Is that sort of what you're getting at? Yeah. Okay. Cool. So, um, because you so never if it's want enter, to we would still do that. that are, um, yeah. So now in this case, if uh, current guess dot length is greater than or equal to five, or I guess we could just use five, but if it's greater than or equal to five, we will just return. So we don't want to do anything. Okay. Okay. Um, I guess we can also handle backspace right now as well, uh, just while we're here. Let's okay. say event.key is, I think this one is just backspace. So if they press backspace, what we want to do is remove one thing from current guess. So we can say set current guess to be current guess and let's see, we need to get rid of uh, the last thing. Is slice a thing on strings or is that just an array thing? It looks like it is. Okay, so slice I think it is zero, on strings, yep. zero, negative one should remove the last element from the string, I think. Okay, so let me just try this. I'll type he backspace and it, oh, okay. So we need to also return here. Okay. Let's try and, this again. and also, you might wait. See if it works now, but I think there's you have one other bug, I believe. 
Uh, oh yeah, it removes everything. Uh, oh yeah, this is going to be. We need to use like instead. We, so we can't use current guess in here because it's not in the dependency area right now. Yeah, uh, it's exactly so, the thing that you mentioned before. Um, we need it here on like line thirty-four to uh, early return. So I think it actually just needs to be in the dependency array, unfortunately. Yeah, and you need it on um, line twenty-three, the way that you've written it. So for now, perhaps yeah. just add it to the dependency array. Yeah, there's probably a way to remove that, but for now, I'll do that and type he. Okay, cool. This seems to work. Okay. Okay. Awesome. So now let's add. What is the dependency mad about? Uh, oh, it needs is game over in here also. Uh, and solution. Yeah. Okay. So now in our lines, we need to also add a class to the to each tile for if it is correct, incorrect, or uh, like in the wrong place. So let's add a uh, const class name. Actually, I'll make this a let. So we can say let class name equal tile. And uh, we only want to do this if this is a, uh, if we've already pressed enter on this word essentially. So if this is not like the current word because we don't show what's correct or incorrect as we type. So let me add okay. another uh, prop that's going to be like is final. And we can add that to our line. So let me move this onto multiple lines so we can keep it on the screen. Okay, so line, guess, and then is final. Okay, so how do we know if this guess is final? So it's just if this is not the current guess. Uh, so if, so this is going to be not is current guess, and we need guess to not be null. So and guess does not equal null. So if it's not the current guess and guess is not null, then is final is going to be true. Uh, I don't know why the syntax highlighting's off here, but I, I think this is correct. <laughs> okay, I so, so okay, so cl let class name be tile, and if is final, then we will add the other classes. So first of all, the correct class would be uh, so if uh, the character is the same as the one in solution at i, then we can say class name plus equals. Uh, correct. Otherwise, we need um, incorrect would be that uh, it's not in there anywhere. So if, or I guess we can say in the wrong place first. So if uh, solution dot includes, is it includes or contains? I think it's includes. Includes both for strings and array. Is solution not what this is called? What What did I call that? Oh, it's not a, uh, we're in a it's different not a component. component. Yeah, so solution. Okay. Okay, so if uh, solution includes the character, then we can say class name plus equals, um, call this close. And otherwise, we'll just have incorrect. So else class name plus equals incorrect. Uh, well, let's see. What... Interesting class name. Thank you. <laughs> Unexpected token. Um, what did I do wrong here? Class name, solution. Oh, this needs else. You have two, you have two else's, yeah. yeah. Yeah, okay. So let's add those styles. So we can say correct. We'll have a background color of to light green. And then close background color of yellow. And incorrect background color of light gray. Back, not backdrop, background. Okay. So now if I type hello and okay, so after I hit enter, oh, we're not using this class name for one. So instead of tile class name, uh, 
Okay, so let's see, that's not working yet. So when I hit enter, what is actually happening? Uh, enter is correct. Okay, so when I hit enter, we need to save the uh, current guess as a, uh, as guess. in our like guesses, yeah, yeah. Okay, so we can say we have solution. Okay, so yeah, we have to set guesses to be, and we can spread our previous guesses. Actually, no, I'm not gonna do it that way. Let's say const new guesses is going to be equal to a new array, but spread our guesses. And then we can say the new guesses at, and we need to get the uh, last one that, or we need to get like the current index, which I think I did that down here somewhere. Uh, yeah, guesses.findindex, this thing. Okay, so new guesses at guesses.findindex val, val is not null, uh, is going to be equal to our current guess. And we can say set guesses, new guesses, and set current guess is going to be just back to the empty string. Okay. okay. So let me refresh this, type in hello. Okay, and it looks like all of hello was incorrect. So world, is all of everything incorrect? Is this just not working or am I bad at the game? Well, you could try uh, here is uh, try just setting us hard coding a solution. Yeah, that's what I was gonna do. Yeah, so solution is hello. And where do we call set solution? Uh, Line 56. Uh, the other 56, there we go. Okay, so if I type in world, which shares letters, okay, so it's just making everything incorrect. Uh, or at least close isn't working. What if I do hello, which is correct? Yeah, so everything is getting incorrect right now. So if character equals solution at I, um, let me just console.log out solution. Uh, it's mad about key props, which I need to fix. And solution is, okay. So solution is like, is Rhino right, right now. Um, wait, why is solution, I thought I got rid of set solution. You thought you got rid of what? Oh, wait, hold on. Maybe I just need to refresh this. Okay, yeah, okay, so that is working. <laughs> cool, I just need to refresh the uh, thing. So if we do okay. like world, yeah. So if I type in world, I get yellow for the O and green for the L. Perfect. Okay. okay. So it is working. So so it is working. Yeah. Uh, this is missing something. Okay. Yeah. Now this needs guesses in this dependency array as well. So we'd probably want to clean this use effect up and like split it into different ones so that we don't have such a bad dependency array, but I'll leave it for now. And we can add this back. Okay. So that's working. Um, I shall leave out set, set solution for a little bit. So that works. Um, what else do we actually need to do? So let's see. If I refresh and I type in like world, it tells me what's correct. And then if I do say hello, I get the correct answer now. And now I can't type anymore. Um, so yeah, I, I think that mostly works. <laughs> I feel like I'm missing some functionality, but am I? Try typing. <laughs> Try typing with, so you have a hello here, try typing different words before, like refresh and type different words and see what happens. Um, well, I guess one thing is I can type things that aren't words. So I can do like all A's and it's gonna let me do that. Um, I don't know, I know actual Wordle doesn't let you do that. Do you want me to handle that or? So since that's a bit annoying to handle, well, I guess explain to me how you would handle it, but you don't have to write it out. Yeah, so I guess whenever you press enter, um, you would check is the word in the um, in the words array that we got back. So we'd have to save the words array uh, the first time we call fetch, and we'd check to see if it's in it. If it isn't in it, then we'd have to play some CSS animation or something to like show the user this is wrong. I think on Wordle it kind of like shakes. Um, but what about so here you're talking about just if if the user enters like. Yeah, gibberish or something. But what about like 
if we wanted to prevent characters that are basically if we wanted to only allow letters. Oh, yeah. So I think. So we do this uh, set on line 43, like set current guess to be old guess plus event dot key. Um, I think we can actually do that with. So I'm trying to oh, we can actually do that really easily with just like a regular expression. So we can just check if event. Hold on. I can't, it's probably actually easier for me to just show you rather than explain it. But essentially, we can just have a regular expression to check if event.key is a letter. So we can okay. say const is letter is going to be equal to event.key.match. I might be wrong on what the name of the uh, function is for a regular expression. Oh, no, this is right. OK, so we have a regular expression. And we need the beginning of the regular expression to be a letter a to z. And we need exactly one of those. And then the end of the regular expression. Yeah. So Bold is letter move to, to use a regex for this, but OK. Well, we have to see if this is actually a thing. Did I do this right? Uh, so is letter. And I think match returns like an array if it finds something or null otherwise. So is letter would be uh, this is not null. I think, I don't know if it's null or undefined, probably null. So um, if uh, is letter, we'll do this. And if it's not a letter, then we just won't do anything here. Okay, let me refresh this and see if this works. So I'll press like the up arrow key. So that's not working. Neither it, okay, nothing's working, great. Um, did I have the dollar sign and the carrot thing backwards, maybe? So wait, Connor, just in the interest of time, because we are kind of approaching the Oh yeah, that, mark, that's it. That um, works. Oh, that works? So the, yeah, so the carrot is the beginning, dollar sign is the end. That's what it is. Okay. Okay, great. That so, so that works. Alternatively, you could have used like key codes. This is where like I would... I would have used key codes, um, but you know, I'd have yeah, to think, look like what are the starting key codes. I think it's like sixty-seven to Yeah. Uh, some for some reason thirty-two is coming to my head, but I don't know. I think thirty-two is like ASCII for lowercase a or something. No, I think it's for space. Uh, lowercase maybe. a or but yeah, uppercase, you need to get uppercase A is like sixty seven, I think. Okay. okay. Well we're using okay. lowercase letters here. Um Oh right. But either way, well, either way, yeah, that would yeah. have been one one way to yeah. use this. Um, the I think there's oh, also. I, a, I, was gonna... oh, I was just gonna say, I think there's also an edge case of if you have caps lock on. I think event dot key is going to be uppercase, so we might want to like to lowercase that. But all oh, right, good catch. Yeah, or what? Basically, put it in whatever case we want to do all the matching in. Yeah. Um, one thing that I wanted to say was. Um, Right now, when when a user types, so right now when you start typing, you know, hello, do the yeah. letters of your current guess appear on the screen or not? Yeah, they do. They do. Okay, so that's the functionality that we want. Um, and then, um, I guess, like, you know, try to do a tiny, uh, a few more tests with, like, words just to confirm that, for example, if you write, you know, a word that has none of the letters in hello that it can, it you know, correctly makes you fail, you know, just just to test okay. out that you don't, you're not missing weird edge cases. Um, okay, let me just do all A's. Yeah, so that fails, and we didn't handle the case of checking if it's in the dictionary. Um, That's and fine. then if I do like world contains some of the letters, so yeah, L is in the right place, O is in the wrong place, so O gets yellow. So yeah, I think this seems to be working, and then I could do hello now, and we get all green. Uh, one one thing that I would bring up is, but to be honest, I'm not even sure how Wordle handles this, is what if you type like three L's, what's going to happen there? Like are all three going to be found as correct, but in the wrong location? Yeah. So if I, if I just made my thing all L's, the L's that are in the wrong location all show up. So the first, second, and last one show up as yellow. And then the uh, ones that are in the right location show up as green. I think that's how actual Wordle handles it. Um, like even if you do have the correct L, I think the other ones would still be yellow. But I'm actually not sure either. I don't, I don't know how the game actually works completely. Okay, so I don't think we need to worry about that. But that is just something to to think about. Just yeah. an interesting like way to handle that. Because if you do yeah. that, then you're not handling it. You're just 
fine, you're just showing it. But if you do want to handle it, meaning like not show it as partially correct, if you already have it as correct elsewhere or something like that, then that becomes a bit more tricky. But in the last you know five minutes or so, one question that I would ask you without having to necessarily implement it is just if you had to eliminate this whole recreating the event listener over and over again on every key type, uh, what will you do? Like, what are ideas right. that you have to change this code? Yeah. So a few things I can think of. So one, we can make a f break the use effect into different use effects, um, which potentially, uh, maybe not actually, I don't know that that's going to help very much. So let's see. Well, for one, we could use a use callback to create this whole function outside of, uh, although that's still going to have to recreate the event listener. I'm actually not sure that there's a great way to do it. I don't know if you have something in mind other than uh, removing those dependencies from the dependency array. Uh, so like we can remove most of the dependencies. It'll just give you the uh, warnings. And then we'd have to go through each time that we use like current guests, for example. Uh, and for the ones that we can just use like a function, like in a set state, we can just use the function version. Um, for these few other cases, um, we might need to like create a getter function for it or something like that. Um, yeah, I mean, the the then, idea that but I had- Then that getter uh, function is going to have to, that getter function would have to be in the dependency array. So it doesn't actually really fix anything. Yeah, the only idea that I had was maybe maybe to replace basically all the state with refs, um, but that's not very reacty for this. Like it's it's kind of yeah. like using refs to to circumvent the fact. That yeah, you, you could this. you could do that. I think you might run into issues of like when any of these values change, we need the component to re-render, right? Like, um, that's so true. you'd have yeah. to so you'd have to sort of hack it as refs and then sort of force the component to re-render anyways. Um, but yeah, I guess if you were really con concerned about that event listener, you could probably use refs to get rid of it, I guess. Yeah. And otherwise yeah. I was going to say, maybe you pass as parameters the values to the event listener, but passing as parameters- mm -hmm. still, They would still need still... to be inside of the use effect. Yeah, so you'd still end up with the same yeah. issue. Yeah, I, I don't know that there's- a clean way around it, unfortunately. Yeah. Well, this would be the kind of interesting exercise to, to discuss as a team if uh, if you were on the job and if we were like trying to come up with this. Yeah. Um, but also then it becomes a good question of like whether that actually affects you know performance or is something that we even care about. Because here clearly like the game is not impacted at all, right? You're, you're right. Typing, yeah. I think it's totally fine. Yeah, I don't actually think it would make much of an issue. It might be nice to uh, actually, yeah, I don't think it really makes much of an issue. Like the browser can add and remove event listeners so quickly. Yeah. Okay. Well, listen, Connor, I think this is going to wrap up this interview. Um, you recreated Wordle, you know, might have a few <laughs> uh, quirks that are different from the real game, but you basically recreated it in less than an hour. So well done. And uh, <laughs> yeah, I think that everything was good. You know, you showed some good, you know, React best practices. Maybe one thing where I would have personally done it a bit differently uh, is like in the um, the line component. Like, I don't know that I would have done this for loop. I think I would have just done a dot map, which I think is a bit more reacty than like pushing everything to an array. And what I would have done is like in the guess that you pass as a prop to line, I wouldn't have passed an empty string. I would have passed a string of length five something like that, um, and yeah. then done, you know, guess.split.map. Um, perhaps another thing that's debatably awkward is the is final equals not is current guess. Like, technically, you could just pass is current guess and rename the prop from is final to is current guess and just presume that all guesses before is current guess are final but maybe you would have to handle the ones that come after the current guess. I'm not sure. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but that was just one thing that came to my mind. But otherwise, yeah, I think uh, this is great and well done. Awesome. Thank you. One last thing, Connor. Just for fun, try to uh, uncomment line 59 and actually like win the game without knowing uh, oh my. the word and okay. see if it actually like works. 
Okay. Well, now you're putting me on the spot. Okay. You got a good <laughs> this starting. This is a true I, test. Someone told me to use arise as a starting word, although every single one of those letters was just incorrect. Um, <laughs> so what letters are not in this? Let's go with a B, L, A. No, we have an A. O, N, D, blonde. Oh, none of those letters were in it either. Um, Wait, uh, Connor, you are correctly handling the case thing, right? Like, because all the words from the back end are uppercase. Oh, that's a good question, actually. Um, with yeah, your I guess not. With if hello, these, are these all uppercase? Yeah, we need to lowercase it. Just lowercase uh, on flying 59, I think. Yeah, yeah. So, like, where do we set it? Random word dot to lowercase. Good catch. Okay, so yeah, now we do have a couple of these letters right. All right now I need to solve okay. it. All right, uh, we have L, L, E, L, this is hard. S, E, L, sel, selfs. Is that a word? It is a word. Okay, so we have S something, S, H shell. No, there's no, uh, I'm going to do this anyways, just to get letters out there. Okay. We have S something E L something. Hmm. S what could be between an S and an E other than an H spell. Ooh, no, <laughs> uh, S smell. Wait, but wait, but it, okay. I see. Smell. Well, no, because the last letter is smelt, maybe? Yeah, smelt. Okay, so that is going to be the end of this interview. If you did enjoy it, make sure to like the video and subscribe for future content. Additionally, we did another interview over on Clement's channel, so I will link that in the description below. Make sure to check that out as well. And with that said, I will see you in the next video.